Okay, so we are streaming this live to Facebook and we'll also be recording this just so everybody knows. Um, you will have the opportunity to unmute. Um, probably at the end would be best for questions. During the presentation, you can put um, your questions in the chat. Um, so we wanted to thank everyone for coming today. This is Saving Your Memories and Your Legacy with John Doherty. And before we get started, just a little bit about ElderWorks. We're a nonprofit 501c3, and we assist seniors and their loved ones with senior living coordination, advocacy, and also education. Um, we do a lot of different events, including this one, and we also do professional events for social workers, nurses, um, NHAs, and counselors. And we are doing a October food drive to help fight food insecurity. So um, there's more information on our um, social media pages, so keep an eye out for that. You're welcome to drop off canned goods to ElderWorks, or we also have an Amazon wish list if you're further from Palatine. So we'd appreciate any support for that. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So Mr. Doherty is the owner and the founder of the Family Album Company. And after years of working with institutions and high profile organizations, he decided to bring the same level of expertise to families that he works with. So he's done a lot of exciting work, including managing the digitization, that's a hard word to say, digitization of the most extensive Italian world map collection outside of Italy at the Newberry Library in Chicago. And he's also oversaw the digitization of 1.5 million negative photos for the Billy Graham and Evangelical Association and the history of their Samaritan's Purse organization. He's also helped with building the Wrigley Family Archive. He's worked with Oprah Winfrey's photographers to digitize the photos from her career. And he's also digitized the history of the Plumbers Union 130 with their history going back into the 1800s. So it's very impressive. So he's lived in Palatine, he's local here. Um, he's been here almost 30 years and he has three children. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Emily. Um, I don't know if I'm doing this right on. That's okay. Uh, thanks, Emily. Uh, Elder Works does phenomenal work for the community. Um, recently, my in-laws have been taking advantage of a lot of their offerings, and um, it's a great comfort to be able to rely on such professionals in times of need. Um, so I really encourage everyone to take advantage of all their offerings. Um, so as Emily mentioned, I've had a lot of really cool jobs that I've worked on. Um, some people think, oh my God, it was great working with some of those famous people and institutions, but I really don't get to meet anyone when you're in that role. Those people have people who talk to me. So um, the content is great, but we don't have any interaction with the uh, important, or at least they think they're important people. Um, so as Emily said, I really wanted to bring that level of quality and expertise to family, families throughout Chicago land and eventually throughout the country. Um, I really believe that our history of our families is incredibly important. And any of your history is important. So um, I know we all just met. I see some friends on there, but I like to do a quick exercise. So if, uh, as long as you're not driving a car, I want everyone to just close their eyes. It'll be about 15 seconds. Close your eyes. So everyone close their eyes right now. And think about a memory from your past. No matter what it is, it could be a party. It could be just sitting on a pier with your mom or dad or your best friend, um, going on a trip somewhere, touring Europe. But just think about that for a second. And feel how, what comes to mind when you are experiencing that. Just sit with it for a moment. And if someone wants, uh, okay, open your eyes, everyone. We're back. If anyone wants to share in the chat what their memory was, that would be great. Um, if not, I understand. But um, what that was, was just a quick exercise um, joy, thanks. Thank you, Dave. Um, these are the memories that 
we're losing to the digital world. So everything now is like the here and now, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Um, but we're losing out on all our stuff um, in the past. So Karen, thank you. In Europe with your mother and having an awesome time. You probably have pictures or videos from that time, but unless you get it into the digital format, it's going to be stuffed away in a box. Uh, I'm just being honest with everyone and you're not gonna look at it again. You might have an album for it and you might flip through it maybe, but over time it's gonna be lost. So my mission is to capture those memories digitally so you can share them and share them with loved ones. Um, these are what makes up the fabric of who we are and who we are as a community. These memories are gonna help us um, celebrate big moments in our lifetimes, but it's also going to bring us great comfort in times of sadness. Um, you know, D, thanks, watch Uncle Carlos barbecue near the grill. I hope you have great pictures of that and you can reminisce about that. Um, these are great. Thank you for sharing everyone. Um, these, these were just amazing. Um, so that is um, what I really focus on and that's why we're here. So one of the takeaways I really want you to have or take away from this is your legacy matters and the people who came before you, their legacy matters. And we don't want to lose that. Um, so that's really what I'm all about. And so I'm going to take you through today. I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to share my screen and show you the agenda I have. Let's see if I do this right. I'm going to share my screen. Um, here we go. All right. So I always like to have people have a roadmap of where we're going. So we might take a few detours here or there, you know, stop off and see the world's largest ball of twine or something. But this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna um, talk about our why. Um, I don't know if any of you know who Simon Sinek is, but he talks about having your why. Why are we doing things? So I wanna talk about why we need to preserve our legacies. And next I'm gonna talk about how we do it, um, how I do it as a business, but also um, I'm then gonna go talk about the resources for you that are out there and available in the community um, for everyone to be able to do this. And finally, um, how can I help? I would love to be a resource for um, all of you um, to start this journey of capturing and uh, celebrating your legacies. So, um, so I do wanna do one more exercise. Um, I know it's kind of a gloomy Thursday morning here in Palatine, so, we're, I'm gonna play a little uh, song for 30 seconds. Hopefully, uh, if, I, I suppose most people are in Chicagoland, right, Emily, in the area? Yeah, they should be right around here. So um, you all should be able to remember this song, but I'm gonna play it for 30 seconds. You can get up and dance, wave your hands, clap your hands, whatever you wanna do, but uh, we're gonna get some energy going here because uh, quite frankly, sitting in some of these um, webinars can be a little uh, boring, I gotta be honest with you. <laughs> so we're gonna pump it up here. And we're just gonna do it for 30 seconds. Can you guys hear it? I don't hear anything. Is it no. Funny? Son of a gun. Emily, how do I do that? I'm sorry. Um, are you sharing it through um, like your speakers? Yeah, is that the problem? Mm. Sometimes oh, Zoom like blocks out background noise, so it might identify that as background noise. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry. I thought I practiced that and it worked, but now it's not. Anyway, it was gonna be the bull sign from uh, the 90s to get us up and pumped up. So I apologize for that. I'll just, you know, 
Did you say switch in here that, huh? Oh, <laughs> sorry. All right, well, it's called Hey. If you go on YouTube, type in Hey, and that song comes up. But anyway, so uh, let's get started. So our why, why do we take the time or why do we want to start on this journey of saving your history and your legacy? Um, I, I really feel we as a society and as families, we're losing our perspective of uh, where we've come from and um, a lot of the knowledge that it gets passed down and the wisdom is being lost. So going back in time, you know, people used to sit around campfires and tell stories about other generations and what they've learned and you pass down your wisdom. Nowadays, uh, unfortunately, when you're hanging out with family members, you know, they have these things in their hands and everyone's just looking at their phone and we're losing that. So um, the why to me has two parts. Your legacy really matters to me. And we now are at a time when we can use um, technology as an advantage. Although I just mentioned how it can be a distraction, it can be a real advantage. So, um, but I want to I want to show you a picture. You're going to learn a lot about my family here. So here is a picture of come on. Can you just my mother on her wedding day? So again, I hope you guys can all see that, right? Yes, Emily, can you see that? No, I just see the top of your Google Docs. Cool. So maybe stop the share and then you can start a new share. That's usually the best way. Okay. There we go. Okay. Is, is that big enough so you can see? It comes up really yes. small on mine. Yes. All right. So this is my mother on her wedding day. And um, my mother came from Ireland. She, uh, she, she was the oldest of seven lost a, a uh, one of their children at a young age so uh, and then her mother passed away at the age of 12 and she lived in a two-room farmhouse basically um, without running water stuff like that and um, times were tough I think my grandfather was uh, in the IRA so he was kind of wanted and um, there was no money so my grandfather said Tilly you have to go to America work, send money back to us. So she always liked to say, I was on a boat for nine days uh, throwing up. And she came here and was supposed, and her aunt and uncle wanted her to be her maid, wanted her to be their maid. And she said, no, that, that's not, a, I'm not about that life. So she went to work at AT&T. She wanted to be an operator, but she couldn't, um, she had to disguise her, vo her brogue in order to be an operator. So she started in a cafeteria and worked her way up and eventually became an operator. Um, I have seven, there's seven kids in our family. We are all um, educated. Almost everyone has graduate degrees, doctors, lawyers. Um, I was supposed to be the, uh, the priest to be the ultimate triple play for Irish Catholics, but uh, it did not work out that way. And, um, but one thing she, her and my father really instilled in us was education because she really didn't have much of an education but she instilled in us education saving some of her favorite terms were neither be a borrower nor a lender be uh, so don't borrow money and so these little pearls of wisdom I still have and these pictures really bring back those memories of really great times unfortunately I was you know just in my 30s when uh, she passed away um, due to growing up in Ireland and having really bad uh, lungs from uh, the dampness. So um, that's the kind of stuff that we're losing. I, you know, I, I try instilling that in my children uh, through stories, through pictures. Uh, they were very tiny when she passed away. So they didn't really know grandma and they didn't know how hard she worked. And so when I, when I think about 
you know, putting together this presentation, you know, finding time, staying up late. I think about what she did and I'm like, wow, well, she could do it. You know, I'm just sitting here in an office. I can stay up late and do something. So um, these are the type of things that inspire me and should inspire you. I'm sure everyone has stories like this, especially, you know, most of the people in this chat room should probably be, they might be, um, their parents could have been uh, first generation here in America. Um, you don't hear about that so much anymore. Where I grew up, everyone is either Polish, German, Irish. Um, so you really, heritage meant a lot back then. And now we seem to be getting modeled. Um, and so maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. But um, I think learning about your culture is very, very important, at least to me. And I think other people also. Um, let me see, where are we at now? Uh, my next point is, um, <laughs> sorry. the second part of that question is um, the practical side. As uh, we age, a lot of us um, are gonna be suffering from some, um, have to go into some memory care. We, we start losing our memories, it's just part of aging, but, Pictures are used as therapy in that world. So um, there's reminiscence therapy. Pictures can give visual clues. Um, dwelling on life stories helps people stay in the present and remember who they are. And it really leads to emotional well being for uh, the, the person going through it, as well as the family um, who is also experiencing experiencing the memory loss. So it's really about enhancing a quality of life. So I'd encourage you if you're going through something like that is have a lot of pictures up and um, you know on the walls in uh, to try to show them pictures. And if you when we talk about digitizing, you know it's different. You could um, you know look at a picture this big, right? But then you can put it on your phone put it on a tablet so it's even bigger or put it on your laptop, which a lot of people have now. So you can zoom in, the pictures are clear and they're much easier to see for uh, reminiscing about the pictures and going through that reminisce, reminisce, reminiscence therapy. Um, and then the there's also, um, have any of you been doing um, any genealogy work? Anyone? Anyone been going through that? So using your old, if you are doing that, a lot of it is written, family trees, where are you from, things of that nature. If you really want to build a robust genealogy about your family, adding pictures, film, um, movies, or even uh, documents, letters, um, maybe if uh, someone was serving overseas, writing love, lo love letters back home, um, those are really special. In fact, I have an interesting um, photo I'd like to share. So I'm going to stop sharing again. Or again. And, um, oops. Want that one. Um, I just did this for one of my clients. Can we see that? No. I'm going to stop again. Sorry. Oh, here it is. So you're gonna see that? Yes. That's a that's a letter, 1916. It's from the German front during World War One, and this is the front of a postcard. And on the back of it is the actual postcard. So I had a friend in Germany translate this for me, and it actually is written back to his mother. Like any soldier would write, and it goes back to his mother saying, we're going, we expect to be fighting in the next couple of days. I don't know when I'll be able to write you again. I love you, miss you, somebody love the dad, and I think he had siblings. So these are pretty powerful, and this is another one, and this is uh, this guy's unit from the front. And he also wrote similar things on the back, and we know it's authentic because we have the 
the postal stamps on them. So those are pretty interesting. This client's parents were actually Holocaust survivors. So, and the collection went back to the 1890s. And screen. Um, it went all the way back to the 1890s. And then there was a gap in the 40s. And then it continued on when they came to America and uh, raised families and stuff like that. But I'm going to show you their archive a little, a little bit later in the presentation to see what it looks like when, um, when I finish up. So, um, and the final, the third part of the why question is space savings. <laughs> so I'm gonna share again, Let's open up the picture here. So I took this picture for, from a client there was 18 photo albums there, and it spans almost uh, seven feet. Can you guys see that? So, Emily, can you see that? Yes. Okay. So I took all the pictures out of those albums because they're stuck in there or the plastic, and over time, that those elements will decay and affect the quality of the photos. And I put them in these photo boxes. They're labeled and. I have a sample here also that I'll show you. Um, so we took almost seven feet of space and turned them into eight photo boxes. So I'll stop sharing now. And so I put them in these photo boxes. They're labeled. And if you can see, they all have dividers. So depending on the files that were given me, and then uh, Acid-free tissue paper is put in so they don't move too much when you're moving them around. So, get that back. All right, so everything's labeled, so it's in one spot. But quite frankly, once you digitize your photos, you're really not going to look into that box anymore unless you have a special event coming. Um, so those are it. There's, uh, there's the memory care. There's uh, genealogy, and uh, what was it? What was this third one, Emily? Help me, babe. Genealogy, space saving, and memory care. Those were the three items I wanted to mention. Um, all right. So, next up is how do I do this? So, um, my focus is on the digitization of your items. Okay, if you and what I like to do is usually people say, oh my God, I have all this stuff. Where do I start? How am I going to get started? I would really encourage everyone to start, just start. Um, videos are usually in a drawer or a box. You can start doing those first and that gets gives you some momentum. And then you can go through all your photo boxes. Um, some people have them in shoe boxes. Some of them, I've been given shoe boxes. I've been given... Tupperware bins full of pictures. But what you want to do is, um, if, if you guys remember going to Walgreens and you sent a roll in, and I think it was about 12 or 16 pictures, maybe four of them were good. Um, at least in my family, we maybe got four of them, but we, but we saved them all. I still have pictures in the Walgreens envelopes um, or the one hour photo lab. So um, I would suggest. Go through them with a shoebox next to you. And um, you can just throw out the ones that aren't very good, the ones you want to keep, you put in a shoebox. A shoebox is approximately 11 inches long, and there's about 100 photos per inch of space. So that's 1,100 pictures in a photo box, okay? Prices range anywhere if you send them in or digitize them. They, they can range anywhere between, you know, 20 cents to 40 cents a photo, depending on what you want. Or you can do it yourself, and I'm going to show you how to do that also. Um, but there's really, I don't go through all the categories of them. So you are you might have film. Film can consist of reel-to-reel. -reel. Remember these old things that, you know, your grandparents may have showed you or your parents? Um, actually have a 
I have a really old reel to reel player that I picked up, which is really cool. Uh, you might be able to see it in the background. Background there. In my office, I use it just as a prop, but um, there's reel to reel. Um, VHS, remember camcorders? These are tough to come by these days. Um, and they could have tapes anywhere from little tapes in them, mini tapes in them. Um, there's so many, we went through so many different sizes and iterations. There's beta tapes. I had a client just give me a beta tape. When was the last time anyone saw a beta tape? So we all went through the same process back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s of living through, you know, kids talk about technology now, try figuring out how to use a camcorder or digital camcorder or the high eight film or, um, so we all struggle through that. There's so many different formats out there because there was no one consistent way. Um, so, and then you have to go into slides and negatives. Um, those are a little more tricky to do, but it's more time than anything else. And uh, DVD, so I have a DVD here of a wedding from 2004. To me, that's not very long ago. Emily, you might think that was a long time ago, but a lot of us probably don't think it's that long ago. But they don't have a DVD player and computers aren't being sold with the trays anymore that pop out. So uh, you can't watch this. So that is actually relatively easy once you recognize the files when you open up the DVD and you can actually just drag them to your computer. It, it's, it's not very difficult at all. Um, and then people talk about, well, what happens when I digitize them? Well, so what? Well, once you have videos digitized, you can cut them, crop them, and make your own videos, crop out the bad parts, the good parts. I was notorious for pushing the red button at the wrong time. I thought it was recording. It was actually off, and then it was off. It was actually recording. So, um, you know, if you just like the pictures, there's some bad video out there, too. And there's plenty of free resources online and uh, lots of YouTube videos to teach you how to do that um, once you get it digitized. Um, what else do I have here to show you? Um, oh, that's what I wanted to show you. So once you tell your story, there's a lot of different formats you can do. So I we had this book made for my in-laws, um, and it's called StoryWorth. So they would send my in-laws a prompt every week and just about their past, about their history, right? And then it comes back. And I wish they would have allowed us to put pictures in, but they didn't. But it tells their life story. And it was re it's really, really interesting um, to go back and read these. And it's, it's they're passing on their wisdom and knowledge to us and to their grandchildren. And it's uh, really a special book. And then there's also my daughter, and we actually, um, if you use, tell them you sent us, we have a, a code. This is a company called uh, Motion Books. So my daughter got married, and then they sent their video, electronically, of course, in, and you open the cover, and it starts playing a wedding video. Now, that's a really cool gift. And also, um, you know, I talked about having pictures around um, your loved ones. We purchased a, um, a frame for my in-laws that is electronic. And wherever we're traveling, my children are traveling, they can shoot pictures right to this picture frame that sits on their nightstand or their coffee table and they get real pictures, real time going to them. And I also digitize their wedding album. So then we, I sent the wedding album to the picture frame. So my in-laws are now watching their pictures from their wedding album come across their screen. And it, it's really cool and they really enjoy it. And we just kind of catch them staring at the screen sometimes just watching and smiling. Um, so that's kind of, you know, what happens after you digitize your videos. And um, do, you, do you know the name of the frame? Somebody's asking. Um, Starlight, I believe. Starlight. I Starlight, pretty sure. Um, 
but it's it's really cool. But once again, you have to have everything digitized in order to get to that point. So that so that was the film. Now we have photos I wanted to go through, and everyone has tons of photos. And like I said, try to curate your collection a little bit. Um, I use uh, all my machines are Epson based. The reason being is the software. Usually the um, the hardware is pretty similar for a lot of this digitization stuff, but it's the software that is most important because you'll get bogged down trying to figure out software. So Epson to me has the most uh, friendly interface and easy to use. Um, and that's why I use it. Um, even for uh, digitizing the videotapes, don't, um, it's really not that complicated to digitize, but you have to have a camcorders, you have to have VCRs, you have to have VCRs that play VHS or beta. And then you really just buying this cable off the internet. It's for, this is a video capture from Elgato. I think these are about $90 and super easy to use. I went, I bought an inexpensive one, like for $25. Again, it digitized it, but the software was so hard to use. And I've been doing this a while. <laughs> This is, I just gave up and went, spent a little bit more money and got the, the better software, much easier to use. Um, let's see. Uh, you also run across when you're doing photos. Oh, if you want to see my scanner, my scanner was back here. So this is the, the Epson scanner I use. They actually have these at the libraries. Um, it does a lot of pictures really fast. And it takes both sides of the picture. So if you're um, not so much now, but older pictures, people used to write on the back a lot. Who was in the picture, what year it was. So this software can actually capture both sides of the picture and then we'll name it. So it will be, you know, birthday, 18th birthday party, 100 underscore A. And then it'll spit out the back, it'll be 100 underscore B. So those two pictures will stay together like I showed you with those postcards and the back side of the postcard. Those will always be together wherever you move them, uh, which is really awesome to have. Um, so let's talk about settings. If you're gonna do this on your own, um, photos, you should do them at least 300 DPI, which is dots per inch. That is the archival standard. And you want to capture them as JPEGs, not TIFFs. Those are the two formats, JPEG and then TIFF, T-I-F-F. -F. John, TIFF. just a quick question. Um, in the chat, they're asking what the model name of the scanner is. Do you know? Um, the the uh, photo scanner is the FF, stands for Fast Photo. That's their line, uh, 680W. Okay. Thank you. And I also have a flap, and that, I think it's retails for six, six fifty, seven hundred dollars. Um, I also have an Epson flatbed scanner, and that model number is DS fifty thousand. And I know they have a seventy thousand, which uh, has a paper feeder on top. Those are much more expensive. Um, a used one will go about two thousand dollars. Uh, but that will take anything that doesn't fit in the scanner, um, the photo scanner and the sheet fed scanner on um, the 680 model will go on there. It does objects 11 and three quarters inches by 17 inches. So that is where I would do scrapbooks and photo albums. You're answering all those questions. Thank you, Emily. Appreciate that. No problem. Um, so a difference between a JPEG and a TIFF, real quick, so you we know what we're talking about. A JPEG is a smaller file. Uh, people will say, oh, well, they decay over time. You have to open up a JPEG thousands and thousands of times for it to decay. A TIFF is, um, a, lack of a better term, a perfect rendition of the photo, but it's a file that is very large and electronic storage costs money. So. You don't need TIFFs, stay with a JPEG um, and do it at 300 DPI, 600 DPI. If you if you think you're gonna be blowing up pictures, uh, 600, if you double the DPI, that means if you double the size of the picture, 
it'll still maintain the same quality. Wow, there's a lot of messages coming at you, Emily. <laughs> well, that's great. I love interacting with everyone. Um, I really don't crop photographs except for wedding albums. So if you think about wedding albums, there's maybe three or four pictures um, you know, on a page. You really can't see them too well on here. Even on uh, that starlight frame, you can't see them. So what I do is I take the whole page and then I individually crop the photographs because there's a lot of matting on wedding albums and things of that nature. So those are really the only pictures I um, crop. If I do come across something that is too big for my flatbed scanner, uh, for instance, I did the charters for the VFW hall in downtown Palatine, which are really cool. They're 1940s, I think, maybe 1920s to 40s. Um, they're just a little bit too big. So I, Staples has a great printing department and they have large format scanners. Um, if you go there, it's, I think they just charge a dollar for a large format scan and just make sure you want the 300 DPI or 600 for large format, go 600 DPI. I don't think they charge you any different, but it would just look a lot better. Um, those are just a few tips from uh, kind of how the sausage is made, if you will. Um, let's see, where do we want to go next? Let me move this out of the way. Like I said, it's about 100 photos um, in an inch. So when you're estimating, see how many you have. Um, and documents, uh, documents are, no one should charge you more than a dime to scan a document. And if you can do it yourself, that's easy too. So, but for your documents, you want to put them in a big box, a box like this, and then it opens like this, and all your documents are in files, and they're safe, and they're upright, and they're not going to be damaged at all. And it, it keeps everything in order. Uh, for my clients, I label the back. So when you put it onto the shelf, you're looking at that and you can find exactly what you need. Um, when you're scanning documents, remove your staples, remove paper clips. They will mess up your scanner. And um, we do not staple or paper clip anything in the archival world. They rust. I've seen it. Um, you'll have a, a document that was stapled and you have a bunch of rust spots on it. So uh, we don't restaple or put paper clips on anything either. Um, just so you guys understand that once it's digitized um, and placed in a file, you really don't need to have any of that um, stapled anymore. Um, moving on to 3D objects. Don, can I say uh, one quick thing? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know there's a lot of scanning apps out there. If you you can literally scan documents straight from your phone if you don't have a scanner to scan from. I know the iPhone, you can do it directly through the notes app. You just take a picture of the documents, mm -hmm. save it. You can send it, email it to yourself or however you want to save it. Um, and if you have like an Android, I know there's a lot of different apps that do the same thing as well. So Thanks, Emily. Uh, also, when you do, if you're scanning a bunch of documents, there's something called object character recognition. It's called OCR. You might see that acronym come up. So that means um, you can make your dot, your file almost like your mini Google search. You can just type in words, and it will bring up all the file, all the pages that have those words on them. And that's very helpful. Um, in fact, that take that's taken away a lot more of uh, being so precise in actually what files and folders things go into. Um, so th thanks, Emily. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, let's see. Um, the 3D objects. So I was recently given a stuffed animal, a bird, a house, and a Pinewood Derby card. And I'm like, what do you want me to do with this? I'm, and um, so I figured out, I just took pictures of them, my stuff on my phone. And I added it to the archive. And then I packed all this work back together into a box so it's preserved. But now they hit, now they can just look at it. And if they really want to hold it, they just pull out the box. So that's one way um, of taking pictures of stuffed animals, um, anything you've done. Awards. Uh, I really don't know why my parents kept all our trophies, but seven kids doing a lot of sports and a lot of trophies. And 
now we have a bunch of box of trophies. So um, you can actually uh, just take a picture of things and put it in the file, uh, electronic file, and it's, it's all good. Um, so where does it all go? You say, when it's done, goes onto a little thumb drive. <laughs> These thumb drives come in many different sizes. Uh, they are not expensive and they keep coming down in price more and more. If you have a really massive file and you want to do an external drive, I would, ex I would su highly suggest an SSD, which is like solid state drive. Um, because before I was involved in this business, I did everything right. I was supposed to do an external drive on my Mac. Mac was going out of you know warranty or style or the new software came along. Put everything on an external drive, threw it in a box. 10 years later, I open it up, the thing was smoking. So some of these external drives are just like it's a metal record player. So if you think about that needle scraping across the record, that's basically what it was doing. So these solid state drives are much different. So lean towards getting a solid state drive if you have that much. And then I would highly suggest, would highly recommend, you have to get it up into a cloud account. There's Apple, there's Google, Amazon, there's private servers. All the cloud is, is a big warehouse full of computers and they save all your stuff and they back it up with three or four different computers. And it's the safest way right now to ensure that your stuff is saved. Um, so you put it on a drive, a little thumb drive. You can throw this in your safe deposit box or some people have safes in their house, so it's safe. You put it up in the cloud and that's about the most protection you can get uh, at this point. And I would, our, our environment is changing. Our climate is changing. These storms are much more intense and more frequent. We have 11 tornadoes in Chicago in July in a week. That's crazy. Um, my heart sunk when I saw um, what happened in Hawaii with the fire. So please, please protect your stuff. I grew up in the city of Chicago. Our basement flooded all the time. Even if you have, don't store stuff low in your basement, put stuff in Tupperware bins if you can, that will keep out moisture. Um, but stuff will happen. And unfortunately, uh, people lose a lot of things and, you know, there's this, the stories are full of, the news is full of stories of people losing or maybe saving one picture. Um, so I, I'm really passionate about this, folks, if you can't tell. Save your stuff. You need it. It's important. Um, let's see. Next up, I know our time's getting down and I want to be able. Okay, so that will, now I'm going to show you, that's the physical, what happens when um, I'm going to show you the electronic file now. So I'm going to Try this share again, and here it is. All right, everyone see that? Can you guys see that? Anyone? No. Um, sorry. Oh, I guess I have to hit share. All right. How about now? Can you see this? We can see your files. Okay, so this is a, one of my clients' file that is on this thumb drive, okay? So you plug the thumb drive into your computer. You see it says drive one up there. And I separated their archives. So if I click on film, these are all real to real tapes that they gave me. So they didn't have names on four of them, but once they watch them and they know what they are, they can go in here and double click. Oh, sorry, not that. I don't want that. Uh, you can click on the name and just type in a new name. Uh, these tapes had names. So can you still see them? Yes. Uh, these tapes actually had names. So we put them on the file. When you're naming things, like photos, I'll show you in a second. Now movies, these were all the VHS tapes they gave me or camcorder tapes. So the way I named, I always put the year first so that it's chronological when it comes up in your file. And you go back to the, and then the photographs. This is much more intense here, you can see. So this is, uh, this was a really big job. These, this was 
Tupperware bins of stuff with no organization. So all I did is I went through all the photos and I broke them down by decades. If they had a box that had something like 1988 to Israel, they got that name. And then as you're going through, you can just double click, opens up, you and your extra large icons. There you go. Those are all, that's, that's their family history right there. Those are all the pictures, fronts and backs. And it's all there in one place. Um, you see we have documents here, their college photos, photo albums I did for them. So 1920s Germany will do that. And I do. And this is actually the outside of the album and then all the pictures inside. So now I, I pack all that stuff away in bins and boxes and it's preserved for when, if they ever wanna go back or other family members wanna come back. But this is what their family archive looks like. Film, movies, photographs. Uh, some, some people might have much more doc photographs. I actually include documents, there are only like three or four, but some will have much larger document collections and then they would have their own file and then from there it would be broken down by item. Any any questions about the uh, the file system? We have a so, question from Linda asking what size thumb drive you would suggest. So it 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 matters about how much stuff you have. So I really don't. I digitize it all on the computer. Get it on the computer. Then you know I set the right click on here. It gives me properties. So this film file was 7.7 uh, .7 gigabytes. So that's 7.7. .7. This is the movies are nine. And then the photographs, which were there are a lot of, is almost nine. So that's, you know, I, I'm looking at, um, probably a 36 gig thumb drive. You, you don't wanna go right up to the, if it says 36 gigs, you only wanna put about 32 gigs onto it. You, you wanna leave a little room, about 10%, a little more than 10% room. You don't wanna fill up a storage device to its max. That's not the way they work and they don't work best that way. It's a higher probability of them being corrupted. And they do get corrupted for some reason. You could lay this on a magnet, um, have it sit in your hot car. Or, there's all kinds of different ways. That's why I like to, you got to put it on your computer and then get it into the cloud also. We, we, we need to have backups, okay? Um, so that's where everything goes. Everyone always asks me, where does it go? There you go, it all goes on there. You can buy these, I have four, to, four gigabytes, 16 terabytes, 36, uh, there's, you get them, you get 500 gigabyte thumb drives now, they're huge. Um, actually, I think I, you can get terabyte thumb drives. So whatever your needs are, but that's how you figure out what you need. Put them on a file first. Um, okay, let's go. Okay, now resources. The good news, good news for all of you. Our libraries, at least here in the Northwest suburbs, are phenomenal. The equipment is there for you to use. They have staff to help you, um, you know, get you started. They you can't go too. And I think most of them offer classes. There's online classes, um, how to use an Epson scanner, how to use a flatbed scanner. Uh, they have scanners for slides. They have scanners for negatives in your libraries. Uh, flatbed scanners can be used for slides and negatives. But again, it's time consuming. You have to put the slides in holders and then put them on, put the negatives in holders. Then you have to scan them. That, it can be very time consuming. You can get your uh, VHS tapes done at the library. Um, now they're doing them um, digitally. It used to be, I put all my VHS tapes on this years ago. And now I'm transferring all those discs into a family YouTube channel, which is free. I really like that price point free. Uh, so we're lucky we pay taxes here. The money's well spent in terms of resources. So um, your libraries are a wealth of knowledge. 
There's plenty of online classes and there's YouTube videos. Um, you could Google anything like how do I scan, how do I digitize a tape? And there'll be hundred videos of people showing you how to do it, how to use the software. John, can you kind of briefly explain how that works when you're trying to transfer like a VHS tape to a thumb drive, for example? Yeah. So, so everyone knows, you know, you have the white, the white, I'm not good at this, the white, red, and yellow plugs here, just like you hook up your VCR to your TV or your camcorder to your TV, you'll have, um, they'll come out of the camcorder VCR, they plug into here, and it's really easy. This cable goes into your computer. And you have to, you can't fast forward VHS tapes though, or any of those tapes, that's, that's the problem. So you have to sit and you can only use one machine at a time at the library for like two or three hours. So you literally sit there, bring a book to read or something else to do, because you just have to sit there and let the tape play. You can't fast forward. That's the biggest downturn. Um, and the library has different machinery. They're more solid state. Like you put the tape in and it's all self-contained. There's really not the wires or anything. And they'll show you how to do that. Um, so it, it's literally that, that easy, folks. The, can you the tell us is, what, sorry, can you tell us what the name of that white device is? Yeah, like, it's yeah. Elgato, E-L-G-A-T-O. Uh, and it's for video capture. It, it literally, it's just this little thing. That's about it. how much does that cost? Uh, I think it's like 90 bucks, not too expensive. I mean, if you have a hundred tapes, <laughs> that's a lot of time too though. Um, VHS tapes are pretty straightforward. If you go to the library though, go online and purchase a head cleaner tape. They're maybe 10 bucks, but um, after I do a few tapes, I run these through and it cleans the heads. So it keeps, it, it just makes a better quality tape. Some tapes you can't do anything about, they're bad. Uh, the quality was poor, the lighting was poor, but um, this will help you uh, clean the heads at least. They probably don't do a lot of head cleaning at the library and the tapes and the machines probably get a lot of use. So that will help you uh, get a better product. You also have like, um, so VHS tapes aren't too bad. They're, they're really kind of easy. The tricky part are the camcorder tapes. So these little tapes, you have minis, you have these uh, eight millimeter. Um, you have John, to have can a cam. You, can you stop sharing your screen just so we can see your video larger? Oh, jeez. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. All right, sorry. So did you see this tape? This is, this is the head cleaner tape. Just looks like a VHS tape. You put it in, it cleans the heads on the machine. Uh, there's also head cleaner tapes for uh, your camcorders. The problem with the camcorders are there's lots of sizes, and we they went from eight millimeter to high A to digital tapes, all within a few years. And so, people in my industry, we figure out that. We were putting non-digital tapes in digital machines and we're on regular machines putting digital tapes in them. So I could have, I have about five or six uh, camcorders. There's no telling which tape will work in which camcorder other than the size. So some are mini, but I could put a regular size high eight in this camcorder, it won't work. I'll put in this one, it'll work. Um, so that's, the, that's where it gets a little tricky with the little tapes. I don't know if you can do the little camcorder tapes at the library. Um, I don't know that. I know they can, and you, but you can also buy an adapter. This is an adapter you can pick up online, very cheap, like I said. Um, and the little tapes will pop in here, and then you can put these in a VCR. So that's another option for you if you don't have the camcorders anymore. So and you put on and if you buy this, there are uh, do get the man. Geez, I'm sorry. Get the manual rewind. It's a little. Thick. You just move this. Some are so more expensive ones are sold in their electronic. They break. It's just another thing to worry about not going well. 
So get, get the manual one. You just put it in and you turn the button to lock it in and that's it. It's very simple. Don't, don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Uh, if you have DVDs that you want to transfer over, like I said, the wedding DVD was easy, but if like me, you already put v, uh, VHS tapes onto this. Um, remember, remember these bad boys? <laughs> Everyone put things on these discs because we thought they'd last forever. Well, they don't. So you have to buy an external hard drive. This is an external hard drive. It just plugs right in the USB port. Very simple. Tray pops out. Um, again, not very expensive. Simple to do. Uh, I, I'm trying to give you guys tips on how to do it um, in a uh, efficient manner. It doesn't cost you a lot of money. Um, I think that's it for the resources. Uh, let me see my notes. What else I have? I showed you where it all goes. Libraries are there. Staples. Um, okay. Finally, how can I help you? Um, so Sandy is asking kind of how the process works for digitizing slides. Slides are just like photos, really. You have to, I don't have a tray here. Um, you usually do six at a time. You have to take them out. You put them in the little things. And then um, there's a plastic tray that goes on a flatbed scanner is one model. You lay it in there, close the top, and you, the software is a little tricky, but the library will show you how to do it. Uh, a scanner like one of those scanners is a little more expensive, um, but not as expensive as you can also buy these machines that you'll put 50 slides in and you slide it in and it will digitize them. But those are, you're talking thousands of dollars then. Uh, those can get pretty pricey, but I think Kodak makes a little bitty one that you can slide them in. And all the machine is really doing is taking a picture of that slide, of what's on that slide. And it comes, they come out really well. Some of them will have, uh, you know, we've all seen the slides that are red tinted um, or yellow tint for some reason. I think Kodachrome slides tended to do that. You can then go, there's free software on your, your if you have a, um, a Mac, there's plenty, there's great free software on there for uh, adjusting color for any pictures. Um, and if you're on a, a Windows machine, they also have uh, software included in your package that you can do this stuff on. It really just takes time. You want to play around. If, if that's what you like to do, it, it's a lot of fun. If you don't like to do it, it's really frustrating. So um, how I can help, I, I want to be a resource for you. You can email me questions if you want after this. We're going to go over a little bit. You can stick around and ask more questions. But um, I'm really passionate. I want to help people get their history, their family histories preserved and protected. So um, I have a business. Um, it's called the Family Album Company. My website is the Family Album Company. No, the Family Album dot co. Uh, let's see. I have it up here. Whoop. All right. Got to share my screen again. I'm sorry. Maybe I should have done a slideshow, huh? <laughs> uh, so here is my information. Can we see that? Yep. So you can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. It's the Family Album Company. Uh, my website is thefamilyalbum.co, no M. Uh, I'm very cautious down since the M costs about $3,500 more than the .co. So I went that route. I figured it uh, maybe someday I'll have an M. And that's, uh, geez, I, it's the family album in my email. And that, uh, so feel free to email me. Um, I'll usually respond in a day at least. Um, part of my process is I check email in the morning and the uh, evening. So um, I'm, I'm working or meetings, doing things like this otherwise. Um, and like I said, use the resources available to you. It's, uh, it's a lot of great stuff out there at your libraries. So, and, and there's the library staff. I don't know if you've worked with them. They're, they're fabulous. They really are. They're very patient um, and they will help you. So what was the big takeaway? I started with in the beginning, 
What is the big takeaway today? Anyone want to type it in? Come on, someone, anyone. All right, I'll tell you, your legacies matter. Everyone's history matters, okay? So get started, start with baby steps. The videos are the easiest, get the videos done. Then, then while those are going, get, look at your pictures, do your scrapbooks, do your albums, do your wedding albums. You guys, especially if anyone's a scrapbooker, oh my God, you guys put so much time and love and money into those pages. They're amazing. So please preserve them. People do care about that stuff. Um, and that kind of concludes the presentation. We have a couple like, more questions. Um, okay. Can you kind of explain, you kind of briefly touched on it, but like if you have a camcorder, how do you get that onto your computer? Is it like another cord that you attach directly to your computer? It's, yeah, usually those uh, cords came with uh, came with the machines. Uh, and you can actually, if you Google the type of camcorder you have, you don't have the cables anymore. Probably someone's selling them online somewhere. Um, frequently, they are just, you know, you're just finding, sorry, it's tough to, you know, they, they just have ports in them. In here, uh, that'd be a bad Price is Right model. Uh, they have ports in them uh, and everything turns into those three red, white, and yellow cables and you plug them into that Elgato machine. And then you plug that into the computer. Okay. So. You need the cables. That's that's kind of the tough part is the cables, but you can you can go on like eBay um, and other sites or Facebook Marketplace, and you'll see the camcorder might not work, but they sell it for parts only, um, and then you might be able to get the cables there. And when they're selling them like that, they're twenty bucks maybe, so they're not very expensive. Just you got to make sure they have the cables. The cables are most important. And hopefully you have a camcorder that works. Yeah. Dan also asked, does El Gato work to transfer a DVD onto a flash drive? Uh, well, if you're using a DVD player, yes. Uh, if you're using an external hard drive like I showed you, you don't need it. It has, uh, it goes right to the USB port. So you just plug that into your computer. But yes, if you have a DVD player and you have a DVD, you can play it just like your VCR, hook up the Elgato and plug it in. And we also had a question from Barbara asking, um, she's had issues with getting a scanner and the software that comes with it doesn't work. So is there a specific scanner that you recommend that works best? Well, that's like I mentioned, um, the Epson products. The, the Epson interface is to me very easy. Um, and they have videos, I think online, there's plenty of videos on YouTube, but uh, Epson is my go-to provider. They, they might, I don't think they're more expensive, uh, but that's just been my experience. I don't, when I find something I like, I stick with it. I don't really play around a lot with trying different machines. I'm, I'm comfortable with the, uh, the Epson. And they do, uh, like all my pictures, when I do stuff for people, I don't upcharge for enhancements. They're just enhancements. So um, I think I had, uh, can I share again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see, uh, uh, I that's, oh, here it is. I'll share this file. And I'll just then make this huge. Let me see. So does that work? Can you see these pictures better? Yes. Okay. So these are pictures from Germany again, the top two. That is the Bismarck airship over Stuttgart, Germany in 1930. That thing's huge. Um, so I also do some picture enhanced. So this was a this guy over here with the hole in his head. That was just a bad picture. A friend of mine gave it to me. It's, it's her father from... Um, Vietnam, I believe. And so I touched it up as best as I could and came up with this one. Can you see what I'm highlighting? Yeah. So yeah. I was able to clean that up pretty well for her. Um, AI is really coming a long way uh, to help with pictures. They're not quite there for video, um, but pictures are phenomenal. 
Um, this is my parent, my mother's siblings. And here's a cool job I did. So here's the picture I was given. It has 1926 written actually on the photo. <laughs> and uh, my friend asked me, can you do something with this? So over here is a final picture. I sharpened it up a little bit. It's a little darker, but it's sharper. And I removed the writing on the picture. So that was all done through AI. Here is uh, those pictures I did. And um, so this is, this is a picture I showed of my mother. This was before, and then this was after. It, my screen doesn't has a good resolution right there, but you can see how it's sharper, it's clearer. And that's just a simple, uh, it goes right through the scanner, it's very simple. Oh, and there's my beautiful wife and me. Um, you'll see that on a few pictures. If you go to my website, you'll learn all about my family. There's a lot of family photos up there, um, including pictures of grandpa when he was uh, in the military. And my daughter's like, grandpa, you were cut. Where'd, you, where'd all your muscles go? So uh, they're great to look at those things. So um, if you do the stuff like, I, I can't say not don't ship your pictures. Please don't ship videos or pictures to these online places. Once all is said and done, it turns out to be more expensive. It doesn't matter about their teaser rates. It usually, I've heard people say it took three months for them to get their pictures back. Um, and I, you know, you see pictures of trucks broken open all over the highways sometimes, it's storms, accidents. There's no reason to go online. There's plenty of local vendors. I would love to do your business. I can, you know, if you have something weird and you want to use someone else, I, I, I have friends here who do it too, but don't ship your stuff, folks. Those are just teaser advertisements to get you done. I've had people tell me they sit on, you know, they're on pins and needles waiting to get their stuff back. So um, that's the only thing I would say about that. There's plenty of local stuff if you don't want to do it yourself. If you want to do it yourself, it can be done. It just takes time. Uh, and some people's time is they want to use it for other things. So more questions? Um, Linda was asking if you recommend copying to your computer first, or do you just copy straight to the thumb drive? Oh, I do it to computer first because then I can see how big the files are to see what size thumb drive I need. So everything goes on my computer first. Um, make sure you have a, a lot of space on your computer if you're doing videos, because the videos, a two hour VHS tape is about three gigabytes. So we usually have like 50 to 100 gigabytes free storage on your computer. So uh, just keep that in mind. Videos obviously take up more space. Anyone else have questions? I think that's about it. Uh, let's see. I haven't been looking at this. So I don't know. There's a lot here. <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. Yeah, I think <laughs> we got to everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, good. I, I hope this was valuable to everyone. Uh, you're going to see me a lot. I've, uh, I'm doing a lot more stuff on uh, social media, telling people what I do showing some samples if I come across some really cool stuff like those World War I postcards. Uh, I stumble across some pretty interesting things now and again. Um, and if you need me, email me, I'll respond. Um, and if you wanna do it on your own, it's not gonna be too costly until you get into like the flatbed scanning and stuff like that. But I believe the libraries have some flatbed scanners also. So, um, Use them. You pay a lot of taxes. Use the facilities. So, um, all right. And and please uh, contact ElderWorks. They're a great organization. They provide a lot of services, um, and they're like I said before, they're a great comfort to my family. So, okay. anything else, Emily? I think that's it. Thank you so much. We all learned a lot, so that's great. All right, cool. I know I threw a lot of stuff at people, but. Uh, it's kind of gets a little complicated, but um, just reach out to me. You eat an elephant one bite at a time. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.